Hi there, and welcome to Failure Bites Bite Back. I'm Alberto Savoia, there is me there, and this is a series of videos based on my book, The Right It, Why So Many Ideas Fail and How to Make Sure Yours Succeed. In this episode, an introduction to pretotapping, not prototapping, pretotapping, and I will illustrate pretotapping using one of my favorite examples, the Palm Pilot story. By the way, if you like these videos and you want to make sure that you don't miss any of them, please subscribe to my channel. I plan to create a lot more videos, so keep in touch with me. As you may recall, in the previous video, we talked about how important it is to make sure that you're building the right it before you build it right. Because most new ideas that are launching to market are not the right it, and there is nothing you could do to save them. A right it is an idea that if you execute it well, it will succeed in the market. And we also learned that the only way that you really can know if an idea is likely to be the right it is to collect Yoda, your own data. You shouldn't depend on other people's opinion or on other people's data. You have to collect first-hand data about your very own idea. And we left it with the following question. Don't I have to have to build a product before I can collect Yoda? And the answer is no. Do not build the product. Not yet, because we know that most products are not successful in the market. So you want to hold off and before you invest a lot, make sure that you're building the right it. I don't even want you to prototype it. Not quite yet. Prototypes are great. I love them. But there is a step that we do before. We need to prototype it. As the name suggests, prototypes are something that you do before you actually prototype the product. A prototype is an artifact or a technique that you can use to collect Yoda, your own data, very quickly and very inexpensively. To put into context, a prototype should take you anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours, maybe a couple of days maximum, to build, and it should cost you either nothing or a few or a few dollars. Prototypes, on the other hand, uh, we know all prototypes that can take weeks, months, even years to develop, and a prototype can cost hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, even more. I remember working on a software development tool prototype that took a couple of years and cost a uh, million dollars or so. And of course, the actual product, depending on what kind of product it is, uh, it may end up costing millions of dollars and take, year, take years of development. So pretotyping, as the name suggests, is something you do way, way, way before you build a prototype or a product and you want to do it very quickly. Why? Because remember the law of market failure? Most new ideas will fail in the market. So you want to make sure that you test ideas very quickly and very thoroughly and prototypes are perfect for that. So to introduce prototype, I will use one of my favorite stories using one of my favorite inventors and innovators. This gentleman here is Jeff Hawkins. Among many innovations and many inventions, he is the creator of the Palm Pilot, the most successful, the first uh, successful PDA, personal digital assistant. And here's a story of how he prototyped it, although of course he didn't use that term because I hadn't coined it yet, his own idea. But before I tell you how he prototyped it, uh, first you have to realize why did he want to do what he actually did. And the reason for that is that his previous product, the grid pad, uh, something that he developed uh, that many people consider to be an engineering marvel, but a market failure, because it was too big, uh, too complicated, uh, failed in the market. So he spent several years and millions of dollars to develop a product that was, in our language, the wrong it. Determined not to make the same mistake, he had another idea for a much smaller product that would fit in a pant pocket called the Palm Pilot, hence the name, fits in your palm and in your uh, pocket. And before building it, he wanted to make sure that it would, was going to be a product that would succeed in the market. You see. A prototype, for him to build a prototype, as you see in that photo there in the middle, would have taken months, maybe even years. And uh, he knew he could build it. He just didn't want to prototype it because he's confident that he could build. The technology was there and he knew how to do it. What he didn't know was whether he would actually use it. When, how, and for what would he use it? Will he carry it with himself uh, uh, in his pocket all the time? So he wanted to find an answer to those questions before firing up the soldering iron and building an actual prototype. So he did something very unique. He got a block of wood, he whittled it down to the shape that he had in mind, 
And then using paper, he created some sleeves that simulated the user interface that he had in mind for the Pond Pilot. And just to make it even more realistic, he got a chopstick and he whittled it down to make it uh, work as a stylus. So, so far so good, it's kind of a mock-up. You know, people build these mock-ups all the time. The interesting thing is what he did with this prototype. Remember, prototypes are a tool that you use to collect Yoda. He went around with it pretending that it was actually a working product. So if somebody tried to schedule a meeting with him, he would pull it out and just tap, pretend that the, the, uh, the piece of wood would actually have functionality. And while doing that, he collected very valuable data. He realized, well, if it's this form factor, I would carry it with me every day. And I would use it, say, 25 times a day. And the functions I would use the most would be a calendar, say, an address book, a notebook, and maybe a to-do list. So doing all of those, he realized, at least for himself, that, hey, I have a winner. This is a product I would actually carry with me and use it. And it would be very simple. Now, this wouldn't be the last experiment, the last prototype that he builds, but it's an important starting point. Just convincing yourself that what you're about to build is something that at least you yourself would use. And since Jeff, even though very smart, is a normal person, he could extrapolate from that that probably other people would enjoy using it as well. So there would be other tests, but this is the first very important test. Here's the key difference between prototyping and prototyping. In prototyping, typically you try to answer the question, can we build it? Now you work, at form, you work on the form factor, figure out how long the batteries would last, how cheaply you can make it. Prototyping asks a very different, but even more fundamental question. Should we build it? And why is this a more fundamental question? Because we've seen in pre previous videos from the law of failure that most new products will fail in the market, even if competently executed. They fail not because we cannot build them. Usually we can build them. It's because we built the wrong product. So once again, prototypes are things that you do very, very early. You have an idea, Instead of jumping into a prototype and, God forbid, to a product, you want to prototype it. You want to collect Yoda. Then, once you have it, go have fun. Fire up that uh, soldering iron, fire up your compiler, and build the hardware and the software, and then eventually build the product. So, Jeff Hawkins did this. It turned out that the Palm Pilot was the right it. In fact, it set the form factor for all the current uh, smartphone. No question about it. The Palm Pilot was the right it and prototyping helped Jeff Hawkins discover that it was. Now, the prototyping technique that Hawkins used, by the way, again, he did not use that name. These are, these are my names. I call that technique the Pinocchio. Pinocchio was the wooden puppet that wanted to be a boy. So here what we have is a wooden tablet, a piece of wood with a little stylus that wanted to be a live working PDA. Prototyping is just, uh, sorry, the Pinocchio is just one of the several techniques that I teach in my uh, class and I, that I include in my course. All of them are covered with many, many, many more examples similar to the one I've just sh shared with you in my book, The Right It. And in the next episode, in fact, I'm going to give you even more prototyping examples so you get more of a flavor for what prototyping is all about because it's one of the most important tools on our arsenal to fight the law of market failure. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. In fact, hope you enjoyed this series. My book is finally out. You can buy it now at any, or any bookstore. And remember to come up and check for more videos, subscribe. I hope you get the book. If you get it and like, write a review. And I hope to see you again very soon. Thank you so much. And may you always find the right it in all areas of your life. This is Alberto. Bye-bye.